There is an invisible, unstoppable killer on the loose. He stalks your churches, your restaurants, your social gatherings, and even your places of business. He doesn't care if you're young or old, male or female, Catholic or Luciferian. He'll kill you all the same. Patient and methodical, he'll spend days, even weeks, putting your body through the ringer until it finally gives out. Absolutely despicable. So please, listeners, take these words to heart. Never, ever leave your cloak of invisibility unattended when the neighbor boy is mowing your lawn. I swear you just can't trust anyone these days. These are dark times. And these stories come from very dark places. Hello, listeners. My name is Jonas Armitage, and you're listening to Stories from Dark Places. I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart, uh, my intracorporeal centrifugal pump, for joining us on what is essentially our flagship episode. Your metaphorical attendance means the world to me, my station manager, and the rest of the staff here at WZHP Radio Innsmouth. We hope our weekly broadcasts become something you're just dying to tune in for. All right, that's enough of the fluff, yes? Any more of the saccharine schmutz, and I'm going to need an artificial liver as well. Let's move on to tonight's main program, shall we? The world is currently in an uproar over this pandemic, and no one can seem to agree on just how we should proceed. Do we self-quarantine, work from home, develop plans to help those whose jobs are not virtual compatible, and rob our capitalist masters of their ivory back scratchers and silicone mistresses? Or do we rub some dirt in it, unbuckle our seat belts, take everyone else's lives into our own hands, and come to terms with a Christmas morning without the attendance of Grandma June or Little Timmy? Tough call. Certainly glad I don't have to make those decisions. Tonight's tale comes to us from a dystopian future that, all things considered, sounds a little more like a dystopian this afternoon every day. For your listening pleasure... I present to you Chapter 1 of Creepy Monkey Boy's epic tale, Spores. It was Lucy that killed me. My apartment was sealed tight. I boxed in right when the panic and the riot started. My building is an unassuming three-story, all brick and mortar in a mostly industrial district. Not the best place to live in regular world, but when the world is ending, no better. No fires or looters here. Not like Boston or San Diego. Entire cities burning with no one left to put them out. The news first reported it as a localized event in the Eastern European bloc. A new pandemic strain of influenza. Some stupid shit. I started prepping then. Spending every paycheck on water, supplies, and air filtration equipment. Six months later, the president the United States is on the news in a full biological hazard suit, apologizing to the world and telling everyone to pray. The government shut down soon after, but by then the spore storms were already blowing across Indiana. They refer to it as an ETO, extraterrestrial organism, speculated that it probably landed somewhere in the mountainous region near Turkey. It was a silica-based life form, somewhere between a worm and a fungus, completely parasitic and hostile to any life form it came into contact with, insects, birds, or mammals. 
Toward the end, they even said that it adapted and started attaching to plants. If it comes into contact with skin, I've heard that it can be removed. The spores, they attach to whatever they land on and root in deep. Two inches deep. This is stage one of an infection. Within about a week, the head will vine out and become a flowering organism, releasing more spores. It's stage two. I remember watching the news during the first spore storms in China. It was like the sky turned black. They showed soldiers burning bodies along with livestock. If a spore is inhaled, it latches inside the lungs and makes you crazy with pain. You eventually become a walking infector, exhaling little clouds of parasite with each breath or cough. Eventually, in stage four, you find a quiet and dark place to lay down and die. Then the worms just sprout out of your mouth and nose, turning you into a human flower pot. Or in Lucy's case, a feline flower pot. I can see her tiny ribs flexing in and out. But she's been dead for two days. The roots are wrapped around her lungs, flexing them open and closed. I can see tiny black particles spraying out of her into my apartment. I had my apartment sealed shut for two weeks. I listened to my upstairs neighbors when ragged coughs get weaker and stuff. I watched the news until the power went off. I checked and double checked all the seals around the windows in my air system. I watched the black stalks growing out of the mouth of the homeless guy down in the alley. When I heard Lucy crying at my door, scratching to be let in, I hadn't seen her in a month. I didn't even have cat food stocked. I don't know why I let her in. I knew I was dead the first time she sneezed. I feel a weird tickle in the back of my throat. Sends me into a coughing fit that lasts for over a minute. But when I'm finally done, I can feel it just barely draping out over my bottom lip. I look in the mirror. I can see the long black tendril disappear down into my throat. I gingerly press on it with my back teeth. I feel a vice clamp down on my lungs. Squeezing all the air out. I see flashing stars in blackness before it relaxes ever so slightly, allowing me to labor on for just a while longer. I'm so pissed, so angry, I open my mouth wide, wrap my hand around the cord, and Ripped, pulling two feet of black rope out of my mouth, along with a red and bloody chunk. The pain in my right lung is when I woke up, I could see all the blood I've coughed up flecked the black spores and tiny wriggling threads. 
There are now two more tendrils touching my bottom lip. It took me an hour to crawl over to where I left my tablet. It's so hard to breathe now. I won't have to bother doing it soon. Grizzly business, that. Could you imagine going through all of that caution and preparation, all that painstaking work to keep yourself safe, and then the cat kills you? Oh, who am I kidding? No one is surprised the cat killed him. Everyone knows that cats are nature's assassins. Look at them, curled up in the sunspot on the window sill, plotting on how he's going to steal your bacon and shed all over your toothbrush. Little bastard. Anyway, that's all the time we have tonight. Again, we at Radio Ensmouth would like to thank you for tuning in and sharing tonight's story. Join us next week when we present you with another tale to entertain. And please, the next time you feel like someone is watching you from the shadows, remember, there's nothing to be afraid of. After all, some of the best things only happen in the dark. Stories from Dark Places was filmed before an imaginary studio audience. All stories performed on this podcast have expressed written consent from the original author. Jonas Armitage, his studio manager, and the entire cast of WZHP Radio Innsmouth are fictional characters, and it is probably for the best that you continue to believe that. If you or someone you love has a black tendril coming out of their nose or mouth, or cannot seem to exhale without disseminating extraterrestrial spores, consult your primary care provider.